parable situation is used all the time on both sides of Christian film. I'm saying um, Jesus taught in parables, so we should teach in parables. And then we have other people saying Jesus taught in parables, but it was Jesus speaking. <laughs> how, how do we apply Jesus' method of storytelling as, as filmmakers? What, what does that mean to teach parables and, and it's taught so that they don't understand, but you understand? How, how, do, how do we apply that? It's a great question. Fantastic question. There's a verse in the Bible that I believe is Jesus' mission statement when it comes to how he addressed me media. And that is when his, he had just told the story about the sower sowing the seed. And he's like out with a bunch of people and he says, now we, we got some farmers here. Anybody, anybody like farm? Anybody farm? And I said, yeah, and I, I know this guy. And this guy's a little bit, you know, he's that guy. And he just was throwing seed everywhere. <laughs> you try to keep it in the field, not this guy. He's throwing it on the road. He's throwing it in the bushes. He's throwing it on the rocks. And he's throwing it on his field. And the road, the birds came in, the rocks, and he, he describes it all. And, you know, and, and some of it grows up and makes 30, 60, and 100 fold. All right, bye. <laughs> and he jets. And then his disciples say, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus, I think, gives his media ministry statement. He says, so that seeing they won't see and hearing they won't understand because it's not given to them to know the secrets of the kingdom, it's given to you, the elect. Now, I've been a professor for, for nine years at one point. The elect are those who elect to leave the classroom and follow me back to my office and harass and harangue and make my life generally annoying. <laughs> but they are the ones that are hungry. So Jesus, I think he says this, and then he turns around and says, yep, there's a few of them following us today. And goes back to home with his disciples, with the records. The disciples aren't just the 12. The 12 are said differently. When you're talking about the 12, it says Jesus and the 12. In this case, it's Jesus and the disciples, those who wanted to be like him. And he explained it. He said, the sower was sowing the word of God in the hearts of men. And this word is sown in all the hearts. Those who are stony, those with thorns, and those that are going to bring forth good fruit. So he changes his language from, from world culture language of the farmer to church culture language of the preacher and the, heart and the word. He changes it from world from story only to preaching and and descriptive and this is very intense teaching you know in very brief Jesus answers the own question why did he why did he teach in parables so they won't get it so that it's hard so that, so that there's an effort needed because when that happens when they follow you home then it sinks in a whole lot deeper and to them it's given to know the secrets of the kingdom and he did explain it, but he had the courage to just tell a story and let it hang. It's like, all right, the end, roll credits, see ya. He spoke to the culture of the people. Content that would urge people to consider eternity. So he had the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now he said a certain man, in this case, we use parables maybe too broadly, because I think Jesus said a certain man. So I think this is somebody that Jesus knew. A certain person and then a priest walks by a businessman walks by people just keep walking by and then this Samaritan stops and sees him. the point is he was being generous and he was doing what was what was needed so Jesus said it and he said I'll be back by I'll take care of it all right that's all see ya <laughs> and he's out and he, once again he lets it hang and he doesn't explain it to the people. But that story causes folks to say, what would I do? Am I, I, I think of myself as better than a Samaritan. If we told the story here in the United States, we might use uh, an illegal immigrant. You know, this person was broke down and, so, and 
and this Mexican stopped and helped him. Paid cash because, yeah, you know, and said, I'll be back and I'll take, I'll take care of any bill that might be left over. So we got people who have the attitude of I'm better, you know, I'm, I'm a, who are saying now, maybe I'm not, and, and maybe the only way to get there is to follow this Jesus guy. So, so that's how Jesus, I think, used stories. We're about building the kingdom of God. Right? If you've ever been to a builder's convention, so you end up this building convention with all the concrete guys over here, and all the roofing guys over here, and all the architect guys over here. And this is just human nature. And they all discuss what is their part of the building, and they tend to, to inflate their importance in the whole building process. So, we have the concrete guy, Baptists, over here going, gotta be on the word of God. If it's not on a hard, firm foundation of the word, your house is gonna fall down. You understand, Jack? <laughs> and you got the, get the teachers over here saying, you have to know what you're gonna build before you build it. You need a plan. You need an architectural plan. So you need to understand how these things fit together. And you have the roofing people who are like, I wanna keep everybody dry and just love them all. Oh, we just got to bring, we, we got to get the eaves as far out as possible so that we can just love everybody and bring them all into the church. Well, well okay. Right? You got the charismatics, they're all about electricity. Power! <laughs> you know? And the, the love people are like, well, yeah, but if you don't have love, you're going to get electrocuted. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. So, and, and, and frankly, we need people that bring in refreshing water and take the crap away. That's part of building your house. And if you pour the foundation without that refreshing water, you're going to be jackhammering it up to, to install it. If you, if you build and install your electricity without a roof, you know, it's going to be a problem. So we are all here to build. We just tend to gravitate to people who like to build the same way we do. And we end up talking about the same, whatever it is that interests us. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. We have lots of churches because we need them, because we have people who are roofers and foundational people. And, but we also need the community to build the kingdom of God. And as filmmakers, we need innies and outies. We need people who are going to just tell the story and walk away. And we need people who are going to, to explain Maybe. And we need to we need to come together. So Jesus told his stories uh, as a story with the Socratic voice. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be a, the guy who helped the guy or the guy who walked by? This the Socratic voice in in world culture down here. And he talked to ten thousand people. And then the disciples and the groupies followed him home. Why do you do this? So that they won't understand. And he switches up here to the Aristotle voice in the church, and he talks to 12 and, and whoever else showed up. 10,010. I think you should plot your project on this grid and use that to drive your decisions on what content you're going to include. And I think the only dead space is in the middle, where you're just going to annoy everybody and, and frustrate the rest of us, right? But the Kendrickses tend to be up here, and they say of themselves, we are a discipleship-making tool. So they are, their, their culture is very, it's, it's a Christian culture that they're presenting. And they're finding a, a strong audience, but they're, they're pretty narrowly focused on, on where they fit. So you can plot, I think you can plot successful ministries, successful media ventures on this grid. I think you should. But to expect that we're going to get massive advertising and massive traction for something that's up here, I think is, is just crazy talk.